In this video, we're gonna show you seven different ways to connect your audio interface to a set of studio monitors or powered speakers. Now, the methods that we're gonna show you in this video will work with all the top audio interfaces and powered speakers. So even if you're not using studio monitors, if you're using a 12-inch powered speaker for a sound system, the methods that we're gonna show you in this video will work for you as well. If you are looking for pricing or specs for any of the cables or pieces of equipment that we show you in this video, please do check out the links down in the description below where we have current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to give you the best price possible if you are looking to buy anything that you see in this video. In this video, we're using two different types of studio monitors for connecting all the equipment together. The first ones are the Yamaha HS5. These are my favorite studio monitors that I've ever used. These are the ones that I use on a daily basis. The other set we have here are the M-Audio AV40. These will help us show you some of the methods with some of the connection options that are a little bit different than the Yamaha HS5. Now, before we show you how to connect everything, we have a couple things to cover. Generally speaking, when you're setting the power level or the volume level on your speakers for your studio, I recommend starting at 50%. On both the Yamaha HS5s and the M-Audio AV40s here, that means just set the volume to the 12 o'clock position. Most studio monitors that I've used, this is the default starting position. Then you can control the volume from your audio interface from there. That's the best starting point. Second is cable length. We're not gonna talk about this with all the different options, but generally, try not to buy six foot cables. It can be really, really tempting to save a little bit of money and looking at your desk, you'll think six feet will do it to connect everything. I have come up short so many times by about four inches or six inches, and I can't recommend enough that you go and you get a 10 foot version of the cable that you need as we show you which cables you need in this video. That 10 foot cable will make it nicer for you to run clean cable runs and get to the monitors where they are. It will be tempting to get six foot to save a couple bucks, but I'm telling you, I've learned my lesson many, many times. You need 10 foot cables at least, even though it looks like a six foot cable will get you what you need. And lastly, we need to cover one piece of theory before we get into all the connection methods. This is the difference between a balanced and unbalanced connection. I have two quarter inch jacks here in my hand. The first one has one black ring on it. The second one has two black rings. If we look at the first jack here, you can see that there's a tip and a sleeve. It's divided into two different sections. This is known as an unbalanced quarter inch cable or a TS cable, which stands for tip and sleeve. These unbalanced TS quarter inch cables are good for a maximum length of 15 feet. That being said, if you ever hear any buzzing, clicking, fluttering, any kind of electronic distortion, or if you're just flat out getting an AM or FM radio signal that your cable is picking up, the culprit is most likely the fact that you're using an unbalanced quarter inch cable or unbalanced cable. Next beside it, we have a TRS cable, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. This balanced quarter inch cable, a TRS cable, will give you a better audio signal for a longer run. How this works is it basically sends two copies of the audio signal from your audio interface to your powered speaker. One of them is pushed out of phase, so then both audio cables will get to your destination, and if either one of them picked up any noise, that noise will be canceled when the phase is realigned when this audio gets to your speaker. That's a rough version of how it works, but what you really need to know here is that a balanced cable can run more than 600 feet without any noise loss, and it will protect your audio better from noise and interference that copper cable is likely to pick up along a cable run. So to sum it all up, unbalanced cables should not be run for longer than 15 feet. If you choose to use an unbalanced cable, you may notice some electronic interference. To protect against this, we always recommend getting a balanced cable. We will let you know which of the options that we have in this video that are balanced and which are unbalanced. We're gonna show you two balanced 
cable versions, and five ways to connect these audio interfaces to powered speakers that are unbalanced. Okay, let's get into connecting these audio interfaces to the powered speakers. We're gonna start in order of my favorite ways and the most reliable ways, and we're gonna work our way down to the more rare and least reliable methods of connecting your audio interface to powered speakers. Okay, so the first method that we're gonna show you to connect your audio interface to your powered speakers is by using a balanced quarter inch cable. I describe this as being the Occam's razor, the most simple option of connecting your audio interface to your powered speakers. You can see here that these two quarter inch jacks here have two black rings on them. So there's a tip ring sleeve. These are balanced quarter inch connections and they will work the best for connecting our audio interface to our powered speakers. So this black cable here, I'm gonna connect it to the left output of my audio interface. I'm gonna connect it to the left speaker here. Next, I'm gonna use a red version of this cable to help keep myself organized. They have the same balanced quarter inch connectors as the first cable. Again, if you are looking for recommendations, we have some links down in the description below. Connect that and connect it to the back of the monitor. As described earlier, the volume is set to the 12 o'clock position on both of these speakers. Then we're gonna turn them on. And then we can turn up the monitor level on our audio interface. And that's really all there is to it. We're assuming that your audio interface has already been set up with your computer and you've selected the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 in this instance from your computer output settings. And it really is as simple as that. This is the simplest, highest quality option of connecting your audio interface to your powered speakers. Now the second option that we're gonna show you here is also balanced. This will use the same quarter inch TRS jack as the first method, but it's gonna convert it to XLR. XLR is also a balanced connection. This cable is exactly the same style and it does the same phase inversion as the balanced TRS quarter inch cables. So this will work just as high quality, but some studio monitors and some powered speakers are XLR only, and that's why you would want to use this version. In terms of quality, there is no quality difference between going TRS to XLR in your powered speaker as it is going TRS to TRS. These are both equal in every way. I present this one second only because it is a little less common because you need to go out and buy a special cable that converts TRS to XLR, but it is the same quality. So we're gonna connect the left output of our audio interface here to the XLR input of our powered speaker. Now for the second one, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna connect the right output of our audio interface. And when you go to this method, if you don't have a long enough cable, you can always extend it with an additional XLR cable. XLR cable is balanced. Theoretically, you can run 600 feet. Practically, you can go into the thousands of feet without noticing any quality degradation. So you can always add an XLR cable if you do need extra length. Once the connections to the speakers are made, we're gonna turn them on. And now we're gonna turn up the music from the audio interface. So that's how that method works. It's also very simple. It's also a very high quality balanced solution for connecting your audio interface to your powered speakers. Okay, for method three, if you are wanting to save a little bit of money on your cable that's required for connecting your audio interface to your powered speakers, you can use an unbalanced quarter inch cable, also known as a TS cable or an instrument cable. This is more susceptible to get noise and buzzing and fluttering and unwanted signals in your chain, but it's unlikely when you're doing a run that's less than 15 feet. If you're running this in an environment that's nice and clean like this, chances are you can get away with it. If you're putting all this stuff next to a power bar in your computer and your monitor, it's much more high risk that you're gonna get some noise in your system. But to connect this, it's exactly the same. We're gonna connect one end to the left output. We're gonna connect it the other end to my left monitor. We're gonna take another cable here, 
exactly the same. It's an unbalanced TS quarter inch cable, otherwise known as an instrument cable. Plug that into the right output of your audio interface and connect the other end to your right speaker. You can turn both speakers on. And then you can turn up your music on your audio interface. So in this environment, like I said, nothing here is close to a power bar. There's not a lot of electric interference in here. I don't notice any noise or buzzing. You might be able to get away with it, but if you do have a problem, it's gonna be the cables and you might wanna to upgrade to a balanced TRS quarter inch cable. Okay, for the fourth way that you can connect your audio interface to a set of powered speakers, we have a different set of speakers here. You'll notice on the back of this one, one speaker has both sets of connections. In this case, it has balanced and unbalanced quarter inch inputs, and it has RCA input. So the method I'm gonna show you right now will work good if you're coming out of an audio interface with a quarter inch cable and you need to feed your RCA driven speakers. We're gonna to go to the RCA inputs on this set of speakers. To do that, we have this cable here, which will take unbalanced quarter inch cables and it will convert it to RCA. So we're gonna connect this to our audio interface. Red is always right, black is left. Then we're gonna connect the RCA end of the cable into the speaker. Now I do just wanna say that this would work if your RCA are on separate speakers too. Most of these cables you can split apart. You can see here that I can actually just tear that apart. So do keep that in mind when you order these cables. You can always order them individually or you can split a stereo pair like this. I'm gonna plug that in and plug that in. So here we went from unbalanced quarter inch. So we are back to expecting we might get some noise if we're running a longer length or we have a high electrical interference with whatever's going on near us, but this will work for us. So you can see there it works. And right now I don't notice any noise or static or hissing or anything like that because like I said, this environment is relatively clean in terms of electronic interference. Okay, so for this fifth method, what happens if your audio interface only has RCA outputs? For this, we can use a standard RCA cable to take the RCA outputs from your audio interface and connect them to the RCA inputs on the back of your speaker. For this, I always recommend going RCA to RCA. If you really wanted, you could use the same cable we used in the previous step to go RCA to quarter inch inputs on the back of a speaker, but I always prefer to go RCA to RCA when possible. So we're connecting the red to the right output and the black to the left output. And then we're gonna connect these to the back of the speaker, red to right, black to left. And then just like we did with the other audio interface, we can turn up the output. And there we have music for the fifth method of connecting your audio interface to set of powered speakers. Okay, for this sixth method, what happens if we have a smaller audio interface like the Elgato Wave XLR? On the back of this audio interface, you can see its only output is a headphone jack. For this, we will use an eighth inch to dual TS quarter inch cable. You can see here, that this will take the headphone output of the Elgato Wave XLR and convert it to a left and right quarter inch output. So let's connect that now. Connect that to the headphone output of the audio interface. And then we can connect the red quarter inch cable to the right side and the black quarter inch cable to the left side. Then we will select the headphone output and we can turn it up. Now this is an unbalanced solution as well, so I would not run this longer than 10 or 15 feet, but this can work with a high quality set of speakers to give you the sound that you're looking for out of your audio interface. Now for the seventh and last method, this one is a long shot. This is if your audio interface only has a headphone jack output and your speakers only have RCA inputs. This is getting more and more increasingly rare, but we'll show you in this video how we would connect them. So we'll connect this eighth inch headphone jack connector and the two RCA cables. On the back of the audio interface, we'll connect the eighth inch jack. And on the back of the powered monitor here, we'll connect the red to the right side and the black to the left side. 
Then we'll select our speaker controls and turn it up. So there with the seventh method as well, we're getting stereo output from our audio interface with an unbalanced connection from the headphone jack to the RCA inputs on the back of this speaker. So there you have it. There's seven different ways that you can connect your audio interface, no matter what type of audio interface you have, to a set of studio monitors or powered speakers. I hope this video has been helpful. If you do have any questions about anything that you've seen in this video, please leave a comment down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for pricing for any of the cables or speakers or audio interfaces that you've seen in this video, check out the links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.